This is amazing. It's incredibly tiny, yet it's receiving amateur signals just off this telescopic antenna. Let me introduce this. A tiny SI4732 receiver. It's super small, only a few centimetres long and even less high. It costs just under $60. There's an option of a telescopic antenna or a loop. As you can see, I went for the telescopic option. Not just for casual shortwave listening, it also features SSB. So I'll be trying it on the amateur bands as well. If this works well, it could make a huge difference to your portable or QRP activity, especially if you're interested in building a companion transmitter for it. Here's a closer look. The case is 3D printed. There's a slide switch to turn it on just on the left. Rotary encoder, which is the only other control. Headphone socket on the right. On the top, a USB-C connection for charging. You might also be able to change the firmware. I think there are modifications and things, but I haven't gone into that yet. And on the top left is the antenna socket, an SMA type. Having a look at the back, all you've got are screws and a small speaker. Turning it on, you have an analog-like dial along the bottom, frequency display there, a status display saying what band you're on, your mode, your steps, etc. There is a signal strength meter there on your right. Your band selection. Basically a mixture of amateur bands and shortwave broadcast bands. If you press this a few times, you get various functions and if you look up here's a few of them I can't vouch for its performance, but it does actually receive the 630 metre amateur band. Listen to Forever Classic 3 Double T. Are you sick of political parties and their games? Me too. I, I agree, I think it's so nice to be back home in the state. Just something to be aware of, touching the screen does add some interference. Forgot your big antenna? Don't worry, find a metal pole and just put it near it. It's not making contact, but it's improving reception still. Even better when you're touching the outer to provide a counterpoise. The 
it's the VK6 RBP Beacon. This is the VK2 Beacon near Sydney on 3699. This small antenna isn't really enough for proper amateur or even HF reception. So I need something bigger. I've got an adapter that goes from SMA male to BNC and then another from BNC to two binding posts. This is about five meters of wire which I'll string up and with any luck that will give a better reception. Although there is a risk if you're using longer antennas of overload because this receiver is very small unlikely to have any selectivity in the front end at all. Using the external antenna tuned to a Sydney AM station note the difference when I touch the earth. Just adjusting the BFO there. We've got an AGC adjustment here. Bandwidth, uh, we'll just do a demonstration of that. This is uh, 500 hertz. So three's the default when I got it, and it seems to be about right. FT8 on seven megahertz using FT8CN. That's the Android app. and 
the, the antenna is the homebook Jupiter Cloud antenna on the self-constructed uh, uh, tilt mast, uh, approximately uh, one three meter above uh, ground level. Okay, back to you, uh, uh, VK5 Victor Lima, VK4 Alpha Sierra. Cars on the bridge uh, on point northwest, and uh, you got no respect on the back of that, but that is all full. We're going to talk about big eyes, aren't it? Uh, no, 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 well, I ain't nothing about the club, so I'm in that club, I'll just do what I want to do, and that's it. Morning, and we'll use the beach for about a week down there, checking out the beach for it. And we're camped at the moment, it's a little free camp just on the river and coming right through all my life. Hey, Mr. Lima, I'm going to go to the beach for the beach for the beach. This is the same signal heard on the FT817. changing the AGC Of course, with something as small as this, there are trade-offs. For instance, it doesn't have front-end selectivity. 
that require strewn circuits which take up room and require complex switching. The result is that you may have breakthrough if you are near strong broadcast or other stations. Secondly, there's very high internal noise. I'll just give you a demonstration. This is with the antenna disconnected. With it connected, there was an increase in noise, but really not very much. And the other thing with a receiver like this, especially if its current consumption is low, is that the dynamic range is also low. So if you're trying to find or hear weak signals, very close in frequency to strong signals, then the performance of this won't be as good as a full-sized receiver. Let's try tuning the CW segment with the narrow filter switched in. You can hear there's a bit of frequency pulling there. That's three. That was four. That's three. That's 2.2. 0.5. Point two, but sometimes it skips over it. This is an amazing receiver. It's not perfect, but I think you'll agree it's quite good value for money. There's many uses. You might just want something to take along and have a little bit of casual HF listening. Or maybe if you want to build a transmitter, but aren't too keen about a receiver, you can use this as the receiver portion. It's also a handy piece of test equipment. If you want something as a general coverage receiver to be testing, equipment that you build. I'll link below to websites where you can order one. Enjoy these videos? Want to start in amateur radio? Well check out my books Ham Radio Get Started for USA readers and the Australian Ham Radio Handbook for those in Australia. For more information visit my website vk3ye.com or search their titles on Amazon.